Great day everybody, my name is Jor and this is Pinakbet and this is the dish I have chosen to feature in this vlog. Let's start with the ingredients. So uh, first we buy online, um, pork, onion, garlic, uh, shrimp baguong, kalabasa, talong, sitaw, kamatis, okra, and ampalaya. You can also get some of these ingredients from your garden if you have. Then we cut our ingredients, preferably to small pieces so that they'll be much faster to cook. And then we put our pork in our kawali and we wait for it to turn brown. So uh, we'll just let it settle there and cover it. Now that it's brown, what we have to do is put some water inside the kawali and then we will close it for a while and then after some time we will let it boil and after it's uh, boiled we'll just uh, give it a bit of a stir and then we prepare our bowl of spices and put it right in with the pork so once it is in there we will just give it more stirs and let the flavors mix with one another and after some time we will just leave it there and let the contents mix together and then we add the rest of the vegetables starting with the kalabasa and we just give it a bit of a stir allow it to mix with the flavors of the rest of the contents and then we add our okra and our string beans slowly avoiding putting additional water into the mixture and then we will stir them once again, allow the flavors to mix with one another. And then we put our ampalaya and then eventually our talong. So we'll just make sure that uh, the wash water will not go into the pinakbet. So as you can see, we also placed our sile and we're giving our current mixture a thorough stir. Then we lower our flame and we cover then eventually we'll just put some water allow it to boil then once again we'll give it another stir and see if the vegetables have already softened if not we'll just keep on cooking them then the last ingredient the alamang we will add it to the mixture and give it a stir so that the saltiness will mix with the entire mixture then we cover and wait for it to get cooked and then eventually we will serve it on a platter in the table and then we can chow down on it and enjoy the meal with the rest of the family. So at this point the food vlog is now over but I would like to express my opinion about the reading Why Sinigang by Miss Doreen Fernandez. Unfortunately I do not agree with her when she stated that sinigang is the most representative dish of Filipino taste. Because for me, uh, our country is an archipelago. Uh, we are separated from one another and we have our different microcultures within the country. We have access to different kinds of resources because some of us live in the mountains, some of us live near the sea, some of us live on flat landscapes and there's just a variety of vegetables and meat products that that uh, we have access to it's not the same for every region or for every tribe I'm not saying too that pinakbet is also the most representative dish because as I've said uh, we all have different preferences when it comes to taste uh, in all honesty, I actually prefer the more um, oily taste of Filipino foods such as lechon. You know, there's just something with that uh, umami flavor that, that's really a mouth-watering. Although there's not much um, diversity in the flavor of lechon unless you put um, sauces in it. Uh, it is what makes me say, mmm, uh, masara. So, for me, the taste what the dish that best represents Filipino taste uh, it's different it's really different for every Filipino even in a certain region you can say that everybody there is going to like sinigang everybody there is going to like uh, their pancit their sabaw or their fried foods like it's really gonna differ and I really do not agree with the sinigang because 
it is sour. It's not that I don't like sour foods. I like sour foods, but if we think about it, children are actually more attracted to uh, sweet flavors. Uh, they were biologically conditioned to like sweet flavors, um, according to some study I found online. So, if we include children in the scope, which we should because they're uh, citizens of our country as well, I don't think that sinigang is the most representative dish. Uh, yes, it is sour, it has that umami flavor, the other vegetables also add to the diversity, to the richness of the flavor, but I think we cannot just put one dish up above the rest, that's just not how it works for me. So I do not agree with the author when she stated that sinigang is the most representative dish of Filipino taste. So in an ordinary week, uh, I think pinakbet is one of the foods that will best represent my taste for good food because there's a mixture of vegetables, you can taste the uh, umami flavor from the pork, you can taste the bitterness from the ampalaya, you can taste the uh, sweetness from the kalabasa, and it's just really diverse. You can, you can pair any one of those vegetables with rice because rice is bland, it will go well with um, almost any flavor. But on, on special occasions, or what I would rather like to say as like my favorite Filipino food, it's gotta be the oily foods, even if they're quite unhealthy. But yeah, that's what makes me say that the food tastes good. So uh, since you've reached this point of the video, I'd like to thank you for watching my vlog and I will watch your food vlogs too as well. Thank you.